Are there any people already who is watching us? Super, merci beaucoup, bonsoir, Gamer Joba. Bonsoir, chers amis, bonsoir. So, uh, are we, yeah, we, I think. Daria, guess me, Srocha, Mikma. Bonsoir chers amis, bonsoir et bienvenue à notre apéro géorgien. Comme, comme chaque mercredi, vous êtes invité à notre apéro géorgien et aujourd'hui, je ne suis pas toute seule. Je suis avec Daria Kholodilina, qui nous, c'est notre invité spécial <rire> depuis la Géorgie. Donc, je me présente pour ceux qui ne me connaissent pas encore, qui, qui, qui regarde notre live pour la première fois. Euh, je m'appelle Anna Tchaïchouli, je suis géorgienne, j'habite à Paris, euh, je suis historienne, conservateur du patrimoine, euh, je suis fondatrice de l'association géorgienne de femmes ignorantes et je travaille sur euh, la vitivinicultura, l'histoire de la vitivinicultura, entre autres hein, questions. Uh, et aujourd'hui, uh, donc, uh, nous sommes en live, c'est l'apéro géorgien et nous avons un sujet très, très intéressant. Uh, donc, uh, je, je mets un titre un peu long comme ça, mais un très joli titre. Bienvenue en Géorgie. Comment la perle du Caucase se prépare à accueillir les touristes? Donc, il s'agirait de l'onotourisme post-confinement. L'invité de notre apéro géorgien est Daria Kholodilina. Elle est blogueuse, voyageuse. Elle est d'origine ukrainienne. Depuis 2013, elle habite en Géorgie où elle a fondé une compagnie touristique uh, Wines and Trails. Elle est très impliquée dans le tourisme, surtout dans le tourisme. J'ai son livre ici. Voilà, donc elle a coécrit un livre avec Michael Udan qui, euh, ou peut-être ça se prononce Udine, je pense. Euh, donc c'est un livre qu'ils ont sorti en 2017. C'est un livre qui représente un guide de, guide de chais et de Marani géorgien. Donc euh, aujourd'hui, nous allons parler avec Daria de la situation actuelle dans la Géorgie post-confinée. Euh, sur l'impact du Covid sur le tourisme, comment la Géorgie se prépare euh, pour l'ouverture de ses frontières, etc. Et donc notre live aujourd'hui sera beaucoup en anglais et en français aussi parce que Dariel parle anglais et moi je vais poser les questions dans, dans les deux langues. Donc Daria actuellement se trouve à Tbilisi et bonne soirée Daria. Hello Daria. Bonsoir Gamer Joba. I'm very glad to be here with you today. Thank you. Um, Welcome to our Apero Georgia. Thank you for being here. How are you? Is everything well, going well in Georgia? Yes, yeah, so far pretty well. The weather is great. The cafes are opening slowly after the lockdown and yeah, life is getting, it, it's feeling better actually. That's great. That's great. So I think we can uh, we can start our conversation and uh, I just want to say if you have any questions you can write, you can write them uh, on our Facebook comments in, uh, in French, in uh, English or in Georgian. Donc si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas à écrire dans des commentaires en anglais, en français ou même en Georgian, on vous répondra absolument. So uh, let's start. <laughs> So I will ask you the question in uh, English and after I will repeat my question in French so it will be more um, global. For, yes, okay. thank you. And after you can ask, uh, you can answer. <laughs> sure. so, uh, my first question is um, uh, before you can uh, analyze the situation of today, Uh, can you tell us what uh, does the tourism and especially wine tourism mean in Georgia? So uh, compared to other countries, is it different in Georgia, wine tourism, or it's like the same thing? Donc, uh, la première question que je voudrais savoir, c'est avant de pouvoir analyser la situation d'aujourd'hui, je voudrais que Daria, elle nous raconte un petit peu qu'est-ce que ça signifie le tourisme et surtout le no tourisme en Géorgie, euh, à quoi ça consiste, est-ce qu'en comparaison avec d'autres pays, est-ce qu'il est différent en Géorgie? So, thank you, Daria. 
Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I should say, first of all, that uh, Georgians are very hospitable by nature. So even before tur tourism got like a business here, it was already a custom to welcome all kind of strangers uh, at people's homes, like with everything they had. Uh, that is basically what attracted me so much in Georgia when I came here for the first time just to visit. So it's uh, the way people are, the way people welcome you. Of course, uh, the tourism as the industry is very important as well because it's at least 7% of GDP. I'm talking the numbers from the previous years. So, well, actually before founding Trails and Wines, I was working for the National Tourism Board. So we always mm -hmm. had to do with mm -hmm. the statistic. Uh, so basically I had to promote Georgia during the travel fairs or participate in creating the campaigns and also like kind of uh, take care of Facebook, uh, Georgia and so on. So um, tourism was always very important for economy as well. So not only as one of the sectors, but like, the pandemic showed us how many people were actually uh, a part of the sector, not mm -hmm. only people who were guides or who ran the hotel, but also the restaurants and like many, many like, transportation services all like many many sectors were dependent on uh, the international people coming to Georgia and especially wine tourism so when you look at uh, for example in Georgia there are recently a lot of grants that are given to small enterprises yes. to support the agriculture and so many of them are given to people who want to establish the winery or to expand the vineyards and so on so statistically uh, tourism and wine tourism are kind of in are present in many many sectors of economy including the agriculture and about the wine tourism well i've been to some other wineries all well in in the world not too far but in europe at least well i had the first winery visit experience when i was 10 years old my parents just wow gave me to, that's great <laughs> <laughs> they gave me to smell wine they didn't oh. give me the glass to taste but they they asked me like what do you smell in the glass what are the aromas oh, so uh, since that time i was kind of getting more and more interested and here in georgia what is different from the other world uh, well, the big wineries are mostly giving you the experience at like international level. So you have the set of wines and you can taste them and the guide is telling you how it was made. Uh, but when you're in family, and I'm mostly doing my small business with small wineries because you need to support each other. So the smaller scale wineries give the other kind of experience. They give the feeling of this natural hospitality, not only wine, but the way they show also the way how wine is sitting in their DNA, in their blood, in their culture. And this is very important. Sometimes people don't even speak foreign languages. That's why people still need the guides, <laughs> lucky us. Uh, but uh, this natural hospitality and the natural way to explain wine to people is uh, very, very different from what I saw like in Spain, Italy, or I don't know, mm -hmm. Greece, whatever. Yeah. So, Tourism is important and wine tourism is something even uh, more because it's related to one of the core values of Georgian nations, nation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what was the situation during last year in Georgia, in Georgian tourism before COVID? Can you tell us about, do you have any statistical data or for example, do you know how many French citizens came to Georgia last year? Because our audience today is more um, French, I think more because of my, our page, uh, Le Vin de Georges is a French page. And, uh, yeah. uh, and um, if you have any uh, statistical data on the, um, what is the compared to other European countries. So if, if you can, yeah. if you can tell us about the uh, situation last year in Georgia. So, euh, donc je voudrais la question, je pense que vous avez très bien compris que Daria, elle nous a parlé tel qu'elle était, qu'est-ce que ça représente le tourisme en général en Géorgie, quel est l'accueil euh, très chaleureux, de, surtout dans le petit vigneron, euh, chez le petit vigneron euh, euh, en Géorgie. Et euh, ma deuxième question, elle consiste, euh, quelle était la situation dans le tourisme de l'année euh, dernière? Est-ce que peut-on 
parlait de données statistiques, donc j'ai demandé à Daria si elle connaît, par exemple, combien de Français sont allés en Géorgie l'année dernière et quelles sont les statistiques par rapport aux, aux autres pays européens. Thank you, Daria. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, I found some statistics from my uh, previous office, so to say. Um, I can say that during the last 10 years, the amount of uh, international travelers and of course the tourists, so not all international travelers are tourists, but the amount of tourists uh, grew like three times more. So, for mm -hmm. example, in 2011, there were around 2 million tourists in Georgia and out of them 8,000 were from France. Then, uh, 8,000? Uh, 8,000 people were from France in 2011, so nine years ago. Okay. Then in 2015, it was already 11,000 French people visiting Georgia out of 5 million people. Then last year, uh, seven, almost like 7.7 .7 million people visited Georgia and out of them 27,900 people were so the difference is like from 8,000 to 27,000, so we definitely yes. grows. Uh, but compared to the other countries in Europe, um, it's still few, uh, because as I remember, usually the people from Germany, from Poland, they were much higher in the rating. Also, well, people from Ukraine, because I remember it was a lot of um, affordable flights, mm -hmm. and from France, they were not really a lot, so they were also not regular and they were more expensive than flights from the other countries. Uh, so in terms of like European visitors, Germany was always very, very high. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we get a lot of tourism from neighboring countries. And basically, when I think about the last year, it seemed like it was the other life, totally different like, <laughs> kind of life. Because it was so much work for everybody. Yes. And, uh, a lot of guides, a lot of people who work in tourism, we were very positive about 2020. So mm -hmm. some people took loans to, for example, to build some uh, new hotel or new guest house or uh, the yes. transportation service providers uh, that I was working with, like one of them invested in like 12 new cars. So we were all getting ready for 2020 and now we are all basically not in a good situation. It's a big crisis in tourism right, right now. So, yes, yes, but I just can uh, add uh, that uh, last year there was a uh, Wizzair low cost company which a lot uh, of flights, a lot yeah, of flights. What and was they... to Kutaisi, so there is a Beauvais aeroport on the Beauvais, which is near the Paris, uh, and uh, there was a flight for, from Beauvais to Kutaisi. And few, a few months before COVID virus, there was a flight from Nice to Kutaisi also. So we were re really, there was a lot of people who wanted to visit it, uh, to, to visit Georgia this summer. So, <laughs> and je vais faire une petite parenthèse. Do you have a glass of wine with you? You are, of course. Oh, <laughs> no, Marjos. <laughs> <pretty. laughs> no, Marjos. So to, uh, I, for this evening, I just mostly I'm uh, speaking about uh, Georgian wine, so I'm always drinking some Georgian wine. But this evening, I chose the uh, Macon Village, so uh, it's French wine. And what do you have? In your uh, I'm having a new producer in my glass, so it's rose because I was also preparing myself for kind of French Georgian evening. Ah, so yeah, rose. It's Georgian rose. Yes, it's uh, probably you know Baya Abuladze, a yes. famous female winemaker. It's her yeah. husband's rosé. So now the wow. whole family is making wine. Uh, it's so it's Baya, her sister, her brother, and now it's her husband. And it's pretty, like pretty fruity, nice, fresh rosé from Aladasturi. Super underestimated grape. Ah. Yeah, it's really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. That's great. Go Marjos. Alors pour Go Marjos. Tante, chers amis. <laughs> je vous remercie tout le monde. Tout le monde, je remercie qui sont là. Je vois qu'il y a plein de nos amis qui participent ici et qui nous disent bonsoir et bonsoir, chers amis. Mm. Go Marjos. Il y a un tout petit décalage entre le vidéo de Daria et moi entre le Zoom et le, la, le live sur Facebook, mais je suis quand même votre, vos commentaires, même si je n'arrive pas à vous répondre tout de suite. So, Dari, I will um, have, a, I have one more question. So, this time I am, 
I suggest to you to talk about the current situation in Georgia. So we know that the Georgian, um, Georgian government started implementing measures to protect themselves from COVID, to protect them, Georgia from the COVID early. Early on, uh, there were checks at airports, at the borders. Um, quite early on, it was maybe in Mar March. Mar March, I think, yes. And today, there I just saw the statistic of this evening and today, for today, there are 824 cases reported, which in, and including 124 active cases. Mm -hmm. uh, and 13. So the people are recovering now. Yeah. Yes, yes, and that's, I think that the great news and uh, uh, bravo la Georgie, uh, that's great. And so today, I think that today we can say that Georgia has carried out these measures rather well and um, the country has, uh, country um, was able to protect itself. And recently, and recently in the news, we learned that, um, learned that the borders uh, will open uh, for tourists from uh, 1st of July. So uh, what are the steps to take when uh, the tourist is arriving in the country? Mm -hmm. So, donc, ma, je, uh, I will speak okay, in French. In French. <laughs> okay, yeah. Donc, je proposais à Daria parler de la situation actuelle en Georgie. Uh, donc, uh, Daria nous a parlé de la statistique dans les dans, dans questions précédentes et elle a dit qu'il y avait 27 000 Français l'année dernière qui sont arrivés en tant que de touristes l'année la, dernière en Géorgie et qu'il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de vignerons, surtout des petits vignerons qui euh, espéraient de recevoir plus de touristes cette année. Ils se sont préparés euh, pour euh, l'été 2020 et il y avait beaucoup d'espoir pour l'été 2020. Et là, maintenant, je propose à Daria de passer euh, sur la situation actuelle en Géorgie, de, de parler de ce qui se passe actuellement. Donc, euh, nous savons que le gouvernement géorgien a commencé assez tôt de mettre en œuvre euh, des mesures pour se protéger de COVID. C'était encore au mois de mars. Euh, les il y avait le, le contrôle euh, dans des aéroports, il y avait des contrôles dans des, aux frontières. Euh, aujourd pour aujourd'hui, il y a 20, euh, 824 cas constatés du COVID. Donc, pour aujourd'hui, il y a 120 quatre cas actifs et euh, il y a eu 13, euh, 13 décès. Aujourd'hui, euh, malgré cette, cette statistique, nous pouvons dire que le pays a plus ou moins réussi, bien sûr, et là, si on fait la comparaison, on peut dire que la, le pays a plutôt bien mené ces mesures de protection, le pays a pu se protéger, le gouvernement a mis en œuvre euh, euh, des mesures. Et euh, récemment, nous avons appris qu'à partir de, du 1er juillet, les frontières seront ouvertes pour les touristes. Donc, ma question consiste euh, en quoi, donc, quelles seront les étapes à passer pour un touriste quand il arrive dans le pays, en arrivant dans le pays. Thank you, yeah. Daria. Uh, so, I, I remember when I, do we have an echo in the chat? No, ah, not anymore. Okay. So, uh, in March, I remember when I was coming from Germany. I was in Berlin in March. So on the 11th of March, we were already checked at the border. So they were doing this thermal scanning and uh, also like uh, asking us if we were coughing, if we were like feeling unwell. Also, uh, they asked in which countries we have been. And actually in one week after all this, it was already like the border was slowly closing and people just started uh, kind of gathering money and like working with Georgian airlines to kind of evacuate people like Georgian citizens from abroad, people who were there. So basically we were very coordinated. I was actually surprised because basically, well, you know probably that uh, we are more like Georgians are more relaxed people and sometimes like n not coordinated. But in this case, it was really like tak tak tak, very like uh, efficient. Uh, we had the strict lockdown uh, during the Easter time because, yeah. uh, again, Georgians are very family-oriented and usually Easter means big gatherings. 
so this year, uh, government didn't let us uh, kind of spend time with on big supras, on big feasts, but it was probably for good because yeah, the amount of cases is very low. The amount of uh, dead uh, like victims is also very low. So we are pretty lucky that it all happened. Of course, economically it's not good, but at least we are all healthy now. And about the, so uh, basically I think the government was even like a bit scared that people will be protesting against the strict measures. Mm -hmm. So they started lifting the restrictions a bit earlier than promised because mm -hmm. at the end of April they told that we will have, uh, for example, like uh, we will open the restaurants in June, we will, like in the middle of June, we will open these in July and now the restaurants were, uh, opening from around the 1st of June, so like two weeks earlier because the dynamics of uh, recovering was very good. Uh, now, yes, from the 1st of July, we are kind of awaiting the border opening, but not with all countries. So there are so-called safe zones or green zones. It means that um, uh, Georgia is negotiating with those countries where they have the good statistics as well, so that uh, we will not risk uh, the health of our own citizens. Uh, so far, I know that the talks were held with Austria, Israel, Baltic okay. countries, Czech Republic. And now, uh, I don't know, as I've heard today, the epidemic situation, for example, in Israel is getting worse. So our uh, people from the government were already being more cautious and less... Um, positive. So they started saying that, well, probably not from the 1st of July, probably not with this country, we will see. So we are very, you know, we are kind of stuck in the middle, we are waiting uh, for borders opening, but we are not sure if it will happen. Mm -hmm. Plus, the European Union is also, as I know, the countries of European Union are allowing the traveling between the countries, the member countries, but not to the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's the tricky thing. So I'm actually awaiting of my uh, importer friend from Germany to come on the 3rd of July, but we, we don't know. He has the ticket. He's ready to go, but we don't know if Germany will let him out and if he will come to Georgia, how they will let him in. But from general kind of impressions from the information that we are getting from the government, it's like we will have the strict checkups in the airport, again, the thermal scanning, and also and there should be cooperation between our airports and the airports where they depart from. So if there are kind of suspicious uh, people there, probably they will not be let in to Georgia. Okay, I so see. Like, yeah. uh, so the strict control at the border and also the travel companies should have the thermal scanners um, in hand before letting people board the transportation or like enter the hotel. Mm -hmm. So we ordered some uh, thermo scanners at Amazon already. So to, to, yeah, to wait uh, for, for the tourists also wearing masks yeah. in the closed spaces, wearing gloves. Um, well, basically using sanitizer, keeping distance. So for example, uh, we've got this list of rules from the government mm -hmm. and they said that in the bus, for example, uh, you are not allowed to place people next to each other. So mm -hmm. you have to put them in the chess order, which called, uh, like, uh, which caused the uh, little storm in the Georgian guide community because now we are allowed to use the city buses in Tbilisi, for example. Mm -hmm. and people are allowed to sit next to each other. So what is the difference between the normal bus and the tourist bus? What is the difference? <laughs> yeah, so basically, why do we allow people to sit next to each other in the normal mm -hmm. bus and not allow to sit next to each other in the tourist bus? So basically, if people don't sit uh, next to each other, so you need a bigger bus for a oh. like, and it makes the tour more expensive, for example. Uh, so we had all these questions. There are very active people in the guide community who were constantly uh, talking with the tourism administration and minister of economy. And today, one of them has got the answer from the ministry and from the tourism administration. Uh, so he was said that uh, these regulations will be revised soon. Uh, so probably they will take into consideration all, all of kind of our remarks, uh, or at least some of them. Also in the hotels, they will have like, I think they will know 
um, this Fouché table in mm -hmm. the breakfast, for example. So mm -hmm. you have to order breakfast a la carte. Um, otherwise, uh, well, yeah, also like more cleaning and so on. The restaurants have been opened now. I've been recently to a couple of my favorite ones and I just mar noticed that the waiters are cleaning the tables more often than before. So before it was kind of the customer is leaving and they are cleaning it. But now it's like before you sit and after you go uh, with special, you know, sanitizing uh, liquids. Mm -hmm. Also, they wear masks while talking to you inside and outside. And yeah, I, I hope that in the kitchen it's also clean. But I, <laughs> yeah. I hope. Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you. The, my next question was, I think you already um, uh, responded to my answer to my next question because I had the next question I would, uh, wanted to ask you about. Um, no, I just, I'm just so sorry. Uh, it's Mana is asking, uh, she's asking if it's his bias husband, Rosé. Yes. 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 It's Bakar. Bakars Rosé. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Baya is the member of our association, Georgian Association of, of Wine women, women Makers. Oh my God. <laughs> women Wine Makers, yeah. Women Wine Makers, yes. It's, uh, it's kind of difficult to speak, uh, to, to switch to English from French and... Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, my next question is, so what, um, I, I wanted to ask you about if there are any restrictions on taking transport or social distancing, oh, yeah. I think that you already <laughs> yeah, was I have fun. my sanitizer and my mask here. Yeah. When I'm going to, to the supermarket and uh, and uh, also, I would like to know uh, what the tourist, what one uh, should do after arriving in the country. So, can he, the person travel alone, or is it better that it goes to a travel agency because it's it will be easier to travel with a small, even if it's a small group of uh, mm -hmm. other tourists. What uh, what can you? So can you ask? Uh, oh. uh, just one second, please. Donc, je voudrais savoir, je posais la question à Daria. Donc, c'est ce que la personne, uh, donc, déjà, um, qu'est-ce qu qu que le touriste il doit faire en, une, en arrivant dans le pays? Est-ce que la personne, il peut voyager, elle peut voyager toute seule ou vaut mieux quand même contacter uh, une agence de voyage, et même s'il s'agit d'une petite groupe? voyager ensemble avec d'autres personnes est-ce que ça lui facilitera la tâche pendant le voyage donc thank you Daria mm -hmm. uh, well before it was much easier to um, kind of to travel alone in Georgia because all the even the you know this uh, marshrut has the small buses mm -hmm. were going everywhere now the buses the, with, with yeah, 11 12 or person yes <laughs> So now they are not running. There are several intercity buses like Bilisi Batumi, for oh, example. Oh. Also the intercity train started operating again. But uh, otherwise you either need to rent a car or to rent a car with a driver or to find the, yeah, some travel service, some organized travel service. Uh, so it's becoming more complicated because of, for the um, uh, low budget travelers because of this restriction. So if before you didn't have the money for, for example, to rent a car or um, to use the travel company, if you wanted just to, I don't know, to backpack, uh, travel by hitchhiking or just take the cheap transportation, now it's limited. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why, yeah, I, I think the small groups are the best options. So once you arrive to the airport, well, taking a taxi or public bus, it's very easy, it's always there. Uh, then I think the tourists should have a mask because now inside, if you're in, for example, supermarket, pharmacy, shopping mall, airport, like bank, and anywhere, you have to wear the mask. You have to have one already with you. Uh, then, well, nobody's checking if you're uh, using sanitizer 
every 15 minutes but <laughs> once you enter the bank once you enter the uh, supermarkets they will scan you and they will spray your hands with this liquid mm -hmm. or they will become mm -hmm. dispensed so this is not a problem uh, then about the hotels not all the hotels have open now uh, i suppose the guest houses will have problem also hostels are not allowed so again the low cost travelers might have okay. certain problem with finding but well it depends on the amount if i wish there would be a lot of people coming but we will see mm -hmm. uh, but yeah hostels are forbidden also you should stay like if it's a family with the child you can stay like three people in a room but uh, if you for example couple like two couples of friends you have to book the separate rooms or okay uh, yeah so there are certain ways that make the trip a bit more expensive uh also about airbnb i think it's still legal to rent like there are no big restrictions actually airbnb gave some marketing budget to some uh georgian like super hosts and they were promoting mm -hmm. them a lot uh, booking.com is working pretty well but yeah i would definitely advise to book everything in advance not by arrival so by arrival upon arrival you just pick your luggage uh, go through this thermo check take a taxi or take a bus to the city center and uh, you can move freely there are like no major restrictions um right now and well just yeah just intercity can be complicated mm -hmm. uh, also about the tourism providers so we, we were always for example there are big companies that operated like groups of 40 people and so on i was always working with only small groups so we had like families or groups of friends for example the people who spend a lot of time together anyways even before coming to georgia so for us basically nothing changes too much we just have to hire the bigger minivan or bigger bus like sprinter instead of minivan mm -hmm. but we always had a group up to 12 people and it was very comfortable anyways so i'm ready to meet the restrictions but companies that worked with the bigger groups they might actually have a problem okay okay thank you and i see that mana uh, is uh, asking a question she's writing us our premier minister said that tourists who will travel in outside yeah, of i'm reading now uh european union when they come back in the netherlands they have to stay in quarantine uh for two uh, for weeks, two weeks. Oh, wow. our prime minister i think she's speaking about nether Hey, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Man Mana is the wine importer. There. Yeah, she's yes. wine importer based in the Netherlands. Ooh, then, yeah, it's pretty discouraging uh, for the tourists because nobody wants to spend two weeks in quarantine, but probably it will get lifted slowly. Plus, I mean, Georgia really, like, we have such a great statistics. So, probably, yes. yeah, our, our diplomats have to work harder, probably. If some diplomats are watching us, guys, please, please. Do something for us. I'm very, very, really, I'm very proud for my country, for Georgians, because it was not only the government, it was the Georgian people. I watched how they were, maybe there was a little bit panicked about the COVID uh, virus, but uh, I, I saw that they was really staying at home. There was some self-isolation i don't know how we yes. call it in so many people stayed in self-isolation after yes. coming like back in march from somewhere when the fights were still allowed so yeah i also had to stay in for two weeks and i mean it's uh really like the situation was not good for the people who live in the regions like in the smaller parts of georgia yeah. and who for example really dependent on uh, traveling from their village for example bringing some fruits or vegetables to the bigger yes. city and to sell them but for like uh, people who can do things online like more or less uh, people from i don't know 20 to 50 years old it was better so we, we were super lucky also there were a lot of online services implemented now uh, like booking of things ordering of things before georgians like it's a mentality thing so we prefer to go out and to buy something in the real life and yeah. now we have more uh, electronic I'm, like I'm living in france but i'm like i prefer to go out and uh mm -hmm. buy something more yeah. than order um by it on the internet yeah. 
but uh, during the confinement uh, I was staying at home with my husband so it was it was um, pas facile mais il fallait le faire yeah also there were a lot of like uh, I started doing wine tastings or like wine talks live from the 15th of March and then also there's there are several wine bars that were also doing this uh, and it was pretty successful actually they, it was mostly for the Georgian audience and uh, seems like a lot of Georgians learned a lot about a lot more about wine during this epidemic because pand pandemic uh, because, for example, 8,000 vintages and wine library, they had lives once a week and you can see that amount of people who were watching was uh, mm -hmm. more and more was growing all the time. Yes, yes, and I had, saw I saw a lot of lives, I saw your lives and I was really, I appreciate your work and I, I said it was really great because Daria is I think not one of, but the the only person who I know in the tourism, uh, working in the um, tourism and uh, travel agency. She has her own travel agency, and you were the only who was working during the self isolation, and you made a lot of videos, and there was a life, and you put a, uh, you made a new Facebook page, I think, and there was a YouTube channel and a lot of things. And uh, I really admire the work you're doing for Georgian wine, uh, uh, Monde, wine uh, world. <laughs> so, and um, uh, me also, I began to make these lives in, uh, during my self-isolation, self during the Banalu confinement. And, yeah. and uh, we have uh, we have uh, Zoltan who is here, and he uh, he is writing us. Nobody knows what will be in some weeks, so we should visit Georgia and see later what will happen. I think that it's um, also he's he's working. Uh, he's uh, he's the wine importer. Yeah, this, this is this wine importer friend who should come in July, and I'm really waiting for him. But yeah, again, we will see what. Yeah, we'll what see. Yes, right. I agreed with Zoltan. We can't, uh, on peut pas prédire. We can't see, uh, say a lot of things now. But I think maybe in the middle of the July, Daria, you maybe you will have some uh, one hour to speak with us and to uh, to speak about the situation. What will be uh, in the middle of the July? Because I think that we will see. Uh, it will be clear clearly. Uh, uh, during the first uh, week of the um, July, maybe to, we'll have more information about uh, about this. Maybe we can make a live from the winery or something, but not that's that great. late. Then. That's, oh, that will be great. Thank you so much. That, that, that will be really great. So uh, I, will, I would like to ask you, how do the tourist, tourist uh, travel agencies like your agen agency, for example, you, we were speaking that you lives uh, during your self-isolation on Facebook but um, uh, other agencies uh, what how do they stay in touch with travelers and how how do they explain the situation to them how you are explaining the situation to them are there some links available on the internet to read before arrival uh, before arriving in the country or or for the travelers it's better to to contact uh, the travel agencies directly so ma question c'est comment les agences touristiques par exemple celle de Daria, euh, celui de Daria comment ils font pour rester en contact avec le voyageur et comment ils expliquent la situation donc est-ce qu'il y a le lien disponible sur internet pour regarder avant d'arriver à Georgie ou vaut mieux pour eux de contacter directement les agences touristiques avant de rentrer dans le pays. Thank you. Uh -huh. Ok, so let me, uh, let me think about it. So, I wait. Ah, uh, uh, wait, Mata, uh, Frangula, uh, well, you, you said it so beautifully in French that I got lost in my English. Ne me interesse of that, Shani, quite a... Ah, yeah, yeah, what, what did the other agencies do? Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> so, we were going, like, I, I don't speak French, but it sounds so nice, so I was like, 
Okay. <laughs> so we, we got it's a beautiful language. I love it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. So uh, we were get, getting uh, daily updates from the tourist board. So they were sending us statistics, new regulations and so on, so that we will, will also update our potential travelers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, there was a campaign, well, it was the worldwide campaign and some of us joined this like uh, postpone, not cancel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we were encouraging our travelers to postpone the tours. Basically, all my spring was postponed to 2021. Okay. Uh, we okay. had everything, but yeah, we'll see. The, also, as I said, the guide community was fantastic. They were uh, very active in uh, this uh, attending the meetings with the government or like consultations what to do and mm -hmm. how to act um, also some people were doing virtual tours we also did a couple i mean we didn't manage to sell them so our aim was actually probably kind of to fundraise to support of some our like producers uh, that we're working with it didn't work too well but at least it was some pr so I made two virtual wine tours. My husband and business partner made the uh, like a small video about uh, hiking around Tbilisi because he's trail sign wines, that's the key. Uh, and we couldn't move too far. So he chose one of the routes around Tbilisi and explained how to get there and what you see there once you decide to go. Uh, there were also some other people who were also using the social media, so they were showing mm -hmm. the places of Georgia where they are based. To also, we skipped a lot of wine festivals this spring. So usually in Georgia, May is the time to go if you like yes. wine, like wine festival. But the new wine festival, there is zero so compromise, uh, and uh, this year I wanted. Wine. Sorry. Women in wine, they should have been we, women in wine. Yes, women in wine in the 6th of May, I think. And uh, this year I was, um, I wanted to be in Georgia for the May, for the Women in Wine Festival and the New Wine Festival, uh, which uh, we started in 2010. I was one of the organizers in 2010 and 2011 before I, uh, I uh, moved to to France, so uh, for me also it was a really <laughs> sad, uh, sad um, printemps. So sorry to interrupt the print. Yes, <laughs> I know this word because Spring. one of the French winemakers based in Georgia, uh, Bastien from Ori Marani. Um, yes. My favorite rosé from him is called uh, Revoir on printemps. Oh, so, it's a good <laughs> one. So beautiful. I know the because of Bastien. <laughs> it's so beautiful, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, May is usually the great time when you work in wine business and to want to discover some new stuff. But this year, so there was uh, several kind of online events dedicated to Georgian wine. There was one winemaker, a member of Natural Wine Association, who just made the whole lineup at his house and he was saying like, oh, these are my friends, these are my friends, you have to drink this, drink that. And it was nice, but of course, nobody, probably nobody sold abroad as much as he or she could. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually the online sales of Georgian wines increased. Yes. In okay. And I, rem I attended one online meeting organized by Bank of Georgia. It was for people who work in wine. And uh, the only more or less happy person was the owner of the wine shop that mm -hmm. actually did a good job during the pandemic. So he said that the sales of more expensive wines uh, got higher because people were curious. They were sitting at home and they were looking for something new or probably the, they were looking for some small sellers or for some wines they have never tasted. And but this was, uh, the same thing was in France, I don't know for other countries, but there was a lot of online sales for wine. Because when you stay at home, uh, you realize you need, a, you need a good wine. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and when you are uh, stressed, like we all were stressed this uh, spring, so you, you stay at home, you, there is no terrasse, 
uh, in Paris to go out and to drink a glass with their friends. So I, I, in France, it was the same. There was uh, the online uh, sales for sales for wine was increasing. Yeah. So thank you for interrupting you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, that's what I meant. The only more or less happy people were the ones that ran the wine shops, but they were actually working really hard. So you had to do a lot of marketing because people are, uh, well, they are worried about the future. They are not sure what income they will have. So they are not very eager to spend too much money. But on the other hand, you really need some relaxation, something new, some new taste. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And that's great. <laughs> so I um, yes, uh, Zoltan is uh, writing that there might be some plans for autumn for zero compromise. Uh, it's a wine for natural wine festival. Uh, so I hope so. I, I I heard about it, but I'm not sure. So we we will we'll see. We'll see. How yeah, it's <laughs> probably a bit hard for the importers as well to plan to come in autumn like it's too short term usually they yes yeah. and for the winemakers also the autumn is the oh, period yeah. where they need to be in your in their binaries in the vineyards and uh, to make the wine <laughs> yeah so i know that you work a lot with the small wineries and uh, Mm, I would like to know if there were meetings between uh, your travel agency or other travel agent, uh, agencies and wineries in general to talk about the current situation and uh, to decide about all to decide how to work now, how, how you have to work together. Comme je vous ai dit, Daria, elle travaille beaucoup. Donc, je sais que je traduis pas tout ce que Daria dit, mais je pense que vous vous êtes en train de écouter ça et comprendre surtout ses réponses. Donc là, je voudrais savoir que en sachant que Daria, elle travaille beaucoup avec des petits petits vignerons. Donc, est-ce qu'ils ont eu des réunions Est-ce qu'ils sont Est-ce qu'ils se sont dit, est-ce qu'ils ont parlé entre les, voyage, les agences de voyage et de, entre les euh, vignerons, comment gérer la situation actuelle, comment décider de comment travailler ensemble désormais? So with, so with the winemakers, we were, how to say, all of us who work with them, we were in touch also in Zoom or in Messenger just privately, so there was no kind of round table. Uh, but we were constantly in touch, uh, and now when the when we started traveling, at least in the country again, I visited some of the closest friends already. Mm -hmm. Basically, it was not really like discussing the future because we all don't know who to expect, when to expect, like mm -hmm. if like the border situation. But uh, of course, we we talked about safety. So now again, like more. Washing hands more often, mm -hmm. keeping it clean. Uh, also, there are limitations on putting like more than six people at one table. So then, yes. you have to, if the group is bigger, you have to separate the group at least to put them to some distance. It doesn't make the life easy, but we will we'll, we'll just give it a try. Plus, in Kaheti, for example, there was no case, confirmed case of Corona. So we had the joke no. that every wine was skin contact kills all the factories and so on. But yeah, of course, it's on the level of joke, but we need to make more research. Maybe, maybe <laughs> it's true. We don't know, maybe. Uh, uh, skin contact wine, Georgian wine is the best solution for... For the world. <laughs> for the world, for the whole world. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> So I I know that um, uh, I pardon 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 I I will just sorry for it up it's okay so um, I know that it's impossible to for foresee uh, things and that the the situation is uh, very difficult right now mm, but I want. Um, what is your what is your opinion and what is your personal feeling regarding this summer what uh, 
how do you think you will, how are you preparing for the arrival of the tourist season and uh, for this summer and what, what's your, I, I'm more interested in what's your personal, personal feeling about this 2020 summer. Donc, quel est, quel est le ressenti personnel concernant cet été d'Aria? Quel est son avis? Et, euh, je sais très bien qu'actuellement, il, il est impossible de prévoir des choses parce qu'on ne sait pas encore. Et comme je dis tout à l'heure, très certainement, on aura un autre live avec Daria mi-juillet pour voir comment, les sont, comment des choses ont commencé, de quelle manière et comment elles vont continuer. Mais là, vraiment, maintenant, je voudrais vraiment savoir quel est son ressenti personnel et comment elle, elle pense de continuer à travailler cet, cet été. So, I try to stay positive during all the pandemic. <laughs> Uh, actually, okay. now I'm, I'm getting less positive about this summer, like for, for the whole branch of tourism, because mm -hmm. definitely there, there will be either very curious people with money who will be coming because uh, you need, if the flight tickets are getting more expensive, if you have to, for example, show the uh, Corona test, like negative test on the border, if you have to book uh, a hotel with separate rooms instead of like something cheaper, then the travel price is increasing. So this year, the, we are not waiting for the tourists uh, who like with less money. So there will be only more or less high spenders. Mm -hmm. There will be no business tourism. So all the hotels that operate for bigger groups might have big loss. Uh, they should invent something, I don't know, like, um, I know there, there are big hotels that are offering some like swimming pool package or some like really hilarious prices for the local people so that they could afford it. Um, then what else? Yeah, the restaurants we will see again, but I, as I see the Georgians are pretty easy, like pretty eager to go to the restaurants. So in the non-touristic areas, for example, like in Bake, in Tbilisi, mm -hmm. Uh, in like in Saburtalo, what I saw, people are in the restaurants during the daytime now, so they, they are missing it very much. They're missing yeah. it like it was yeah. in, in Paris. It, they opened the uh, terrace uh, la last week and the first day uh, me and my husband we wanted to take our lunch to, um, uh, at the uh, terrace and uh, no, there was no places. <laughs> Yeah, so I, it's recommended to book now. So even the government is telling yeah. us uh, that we should book and kind of not create the extra kind of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. kind of concentration of people at one spot so to keep the distance and so on. And actually today there was another briefing by the government representatives and uh, I think, yeah, the prime minister said that uh, it will be a hard year and like, uh, you know, they, they couldn't tell it to us in the very beginning because then people would just go panicking too much but yeah i'm i'm not sure it's like a very positive prognose but if uh european union lets people out without like some strict mm -hmm. quarantine and mm -hmm. if the situation is i mean positive here so if we are ready to host people i would be the happiest of course <laughs> yeah Thank you. And yeah, every, everybody is welcome. And actually about, again, like a, quite a good thing about the tourism administration. Uh, they uh, hosted all people who came from abroad. Like this two weeks quarantine was for free for us. Oh. So I don't know, like Mama yes. said that in the Netherlands, uh, there will be two weeks quarantine yes. for people. I, I don't know how it works in the European Union, but in Georgia, uh, the tourism administration covered the costs of quarantine for the people who arrived. Yes. And I, don't the think it was the, I don't think it was the same uh, in the European Union, because I in think U it's in only... Ukraine people had to pay. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, okay. what, yeah. Yeah. I think it was only maybe uh i don't know i'm not sure but i think it was only in georgia that the government was paying for two two weeks of quarantine so but pe people were coming you know like uh, and staying in sheraton or something like this like when the really and nice i hotel. saw the, some of them began uh, became very famous with their life with the lives or the videos posting from uh from yeah, their yeah. quarantine <laughs> there were some tourists who became very famous in georgia yeah, definitely. 
<laughs> so uh, thank you so much, Daria. Now is the, the time to um, write us your questions. If you have any questions, don't hesitate because uh, I don't have any questions for this evening. Uh, si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas à nous écrire parce que nous, nous, ça fait, uh, nous, nous sommes en live depuis une heure. Donc moi, j'ai j'ai plus de questions particulières avec, euh, à poser à Daria, donc n'hésitez pas à nous poser des questions si vous en avez. Et euh, je pense que d'ici, peut-être dans un mois, on pourra se voir un, encore une fois avec elle, avec Daria, pour parler de la situation telle qu'elle sera, telle qu sera euh, mi-juillet, pour, voilà, pour euh, savoir comment les, euh, toutes ces restrictions et des gestes barrières qui seront mises à en place par l'État, comment ils fonctionnent. Donc, um, comment ils vont fonctionner. Uh, Daria, I think it will, if you have, uh, if you have a time, uh, just in one month, like me, um, it's in the middle of the July, we can make another live, so you can uh, tell us more about the situation which will be in Georgia at that time, and uh, We can uh, see it. Uh. Ah, il y a Manuel qui nous écrit, demain je viens d'arriver. Bah, vous aurez l'occasion, vous aurez l'occasion à revoir toute notre live qui nous sommes en, en streaming depuis une heure. <laughs> so, uh, someone who's just arrived and um, uh, our uh, Zoom re uh, réunion will, will be on... Um, Enregistrement, tu en as dit, Facebook, c'est... Yeah, there will be the recording, so this video will be saved on the page. Yes. Uh, and so yeah, you, you can, can see it later, it at any time, any time. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah. Daria, thank you so, so much. Thank you very much for be here this evening and I want to say for those who arrived, uh, just arrived, that Daria is uh, working and she's living in Georgia from 2013. She, is, uh, she has her travel agency, uh, Trails and Wines, and she's the co-author of, uh, of a book, uh, Georgia, A Guide to the Cradle of Wine, uh, with um, uh, Mikael How, how I have to pronounce it, Houdin? Yep. Oui, with uh, Michael Houdin. And this book was uh, published in 2000 and, uh, 2017. And uh, so uh, she asked a lot of questions. There was, uh, um, we had the questions also on Facebook. I have my questions for uh, Daria. And thank you, thank you, Daria, so much for being here with us this evening. Thank you, and give my love and our love to Georgia. We miss you so, so much. <laughs> We are waiting for you. Any, yeah, any time when it's allowed. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Merci, merci à Daria merci. qui depuis 2013 tra travaille et qui vit en Géorgie. Elle consacre énormément de temps pour promouvoir le, euh, le vin géorgien et les vign vignerons et des vignobles géorgiens. Donc je les remercie énormément et puis je vous propose de rester en contact avec nous, avec Daria aussi, s'adresser à elle si vous, si vous avez plus de questions. I think Uh, that if uh, someone has um, uh, questions uh, more specific, yeah, they, they can write in comments, for example, or to ask me directly uh, any any time. Thank you so much, Daria. So I wish you a good evening, Gau Marjos. Gau Marjos. Gau Marjos. Bonsoir, chers amis. Merci beaucoup et au revoir. Au revoir.